Ladies and gents, welcome back. We have been hearing about a national citizen's inquiry into the pandemic that happened across the world, but basically what happened here in Canada and is led by Preston Manning. He stuck his neck out and said, let's let's actually do this. And while we've had uh, one person in particular that I've been familiar with that actually testified at the National Citizens Inquiry. And well, here's uh, here's Tom Marazzo here today to join me to talk about what's going on with this inquiry. Thanks for joining me today, Tom. Yeah, thanks for having me back. So thanks. what is this inquiry? We, we've had, you know, the government has, has basically refused to really do much of anything. Some people are looking for amnesty for the misdeeds that they had uh, done in society. Uh, two people <laughs> with well, we we're all familiar with how it all went down. Um, what led this charge? And uh, we we know that uh, Preston Manning is is behind this, but um, what what's the gist of what's happening here? Well, I first and foremost, I think the the major motivation behind this, at least it is for me, but I suspect for many of the others who participated or even have been pushing for this is that they just don't trust the word of the government anymore. Um, like after what we saw with the Public Order Emergency Commission, why would you? Why would you trust that the government is going to, by law, be doing the Public Order Emergency Commission? Like it's not a choice that they made that, hey, we're so magnificent, we're going to do this. They were required under Section 63 of the Act itself uh, to do a, a commission or an inquiry. But what did they do? They sort of subverted the whole system by appointing somebody that they wanted. And the very people in the legislation that were supposed to be examined, which was the government, it, they weren't the ones that were being examined. I, I sat through the, the commission for seven and a half weeks. I can tell you the government's actions weren't the ones that were actually being inquired about. But this is different with the citizen's inquiry. This is the citizen's inquiry doesn't have um there's not a political uh survival at stake here you know the results of the public or the uh national citizens inquiry is just to get to the truth to be transparent um and to give the public answers and to hear from experts that have until recently been fully censored or silenced um, so the important thing about this is there's no faith or trust in the government to be open and transparent about this. So the National Citizens Inquiry is a group of citizens who lead it and who funded it to make this a reality, to get the truth into the hands of any Canadian who's interested in finding out what's actually been going on, what are the other experiences for other Canadians across the country, not just themselves. But this is a national uh, inquiry. So I, I, I know that you testified at this inquiry yeah. and I'm just finding out now that it's, it, this is actually on the road. It's going yes. across Canada. They're, they have a website up here where you can you can get involved. You can they actually have that written here. Um, what's the mm -hmm. process? Because you you did get involved and you you testified at this. What what would people yeah. have to do to get themselves involved in this? I was sent the link uh, months ago. I can't be sure who sent me the. I think several people sent me the link um, to just go in and voluntarily put your name on the list as somebody who would be willing to testify. So several people sent me the list uh, or the link. I applied months ago, and then I was one of the people selected. Um, and because it's it was happening in Toronto, and currently I'm I'm out just outside of the GTA. Uh, this was sort of the venue where they said, okay, we're going to be there for three days in the GTA. Uh, we'd like to have your testimony. So I think there's a committee that's involved in it in the commissioners themselves and the, the main lawyer, Sean, I, I think they all decide on the testimony that they think is most appropriate, um, and has sort of a, a wide impact on everybody involved. So mine was i spoke about veterans issues during the convoy and i spoke about um you know having my bank accounts frozen and i spoke about you know pre pre-convoy uh what my experiences were you know losing my job as a college teacher 
um, because I didn't want to participate in any experiments. So, you know, they, they kind of took a few different themes with me, but you know, you had Bruce Party, who's a brilliant lawyer. He's a law professor at Queens University. He had uh, another friend of mine, uh, Dr. Laura Braden. She's out in PEI. Uh, I was in Ottawa with her and her husband, Patrick. Uh, she's got a PhD as well. You had a Dr. Jessica Rose. She testified a few days ago, uh, and she was in there for about an hour and a half. Like, these are world-renowned experts, uh, PhD level like Bruce Party is a, has a PhD in law, right? These are experts in in the things that happened around the world over the last three plus years. It's amazing. Like uh, so many people are coming out to it now. Right now, there's mm -hmm. a big cry, a, an out outcry for people to actually share this information out there. The media seems to not want to touch it. It seems like, well, the media is kind of implica implicated in, in a lot of the, uh, the disaster that was the pandemic. And then obviously yeah. the, the, the <laughs> subsequent, uh, well, what the government did uh, as, as, as well here. And that's really interesting to me, too, because the other day the CBC actually attended uh one of the they were there for one of the days and i think it was probably about a week and a half after um no maybe two weeks after rodney palmer testified because he was a former cbc uh correspondent who testified at the nci the day before me um in his experiences and what he was viewing from his you know former colleagues the cbc um, and so that was really interesting that a former 20 year veteran of the CBC was actually strongly criticizing the actions of the CBC during the inquiry, uh, that are at the NCI. So then a couple days ago, they actually showed up to cover it. And I watched, somebody sent me the link. The CBC actually did a reasonable job at covering it. Wow, that's actually <laughs> astonishing, yeah. uh, given yeah. their track record here in Canada. Yes. Uh, and <laughs> with with the news that we just found out, they're they're very upset uh, with being labeled government funded uh, media. <laughs> I, I don't yeah. think they've ever been shy about actually being government funded. But uh, that's that's a new thing, apparently. But so moving forward with this, uh, of course, people can try to get uh, involved in this as much as they can. Um, what is, what is the goal? What is, what is, what, what is ultimately, what do you think will happen from this, this inquiry? Well, it is again, um, being shared on social media and it is a, you know, in terms of the law, this is more of a, a court of public opinion, right? This has no legal bearing. Um, there's, you know, no teeth to this. And, and same with the Public Order Emergency Commission. I mean, there was no prosecutions to come out of that either. Mm. Uh, we saw Justin Trudeau perjure himself under oath about lying, and yet no action came forward. So, no. I mean, even, even the minuscule amount of um, legal infraction wasn't taken to task at the commission. But this, you know, I, I had a great conversation with Derek Sloan the other day about this, and... You know, my point was the conservatives should be doing this kind of thing. And he said, you know, the official opposition doesn't have any more power or authority than this National Citizens Inquiry does. It's only the government, the executive branch or the administrative branch that actually has power to do anything um, effective if they hold an inquiry. So... You know, if the conservatives being and I and I single them out because they're the official opposition, they still don't even have power under our current system of government to take the government to task on any of these legal issues regarding what's happened in the last three years. But this National Citizens Inquiry is is the real, I think, goal is to bring awareness and to bring a, not accountability, but transparency. And that's the big difference. Right. It. If you look at a more democratic society, it's always highly transparent. Mm -hmm. If you look at the way our society has been, it's very uh, not transparent. And a lot of Canadians are upset with the direction of this country because of the lack of transparency. The National Citizens Inquiry aims to give transparency 
so Canadians can find out what has happened to this country and to other people the last three years. So at the end, they're traveling uh, across the country, many different cities, and then they'll be returning back towards Ontario. But the result will be a final report. There are four commissioners, and those commissioners are going to write a final report based on a whole series of recommendations to try and give to the government of Canada. And what they do with that is up to them, but it's what, like you can't just leave it in their lap and say, okay, you do all the heavy lifting. That report has to be something that the public is passionate about. And the public has to go to each and every one of their, their ridings and talk to their member of parliament and demand that something be done about, you know, what's printed in that report. I think the citizens have led this, but the citizens need to have the final voice and give direction to their members of parliament and even to their MPPs or MLAs. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing because it's not a federal issue. It's an all of government issue. It's municipal, provincial and federal. Uh, this is what the recommendations will be about. So the irony, of course, is, well, the, because we, <laughs> this is about transparency, but we're covering this on YouTube where we can't always be fully transparent, especially about this yeah. issue. So trying to cover this as much as I possibly can and give yeah. the information out to people out here. Uh, I'll, of course, give the link to this in the description down below. But thank you so much, Tom, for joining me today to let people know more about what's happening here with the NCI. Yeah, it's my pleasure to spread the word about what the these great people are doing. Thanks again. No problem.